Arizona and Kansas State. That's the headline this week in the Big 12, but a whole lot of sneaky matchups like the backyard brawl and BYU playing a night game in Laramie. It's time to get the Big 12 squad together. You're talking ball with the Big 12 squad. From Oklahoma State to Utah, from Kansas State to BYU. From Houston to Texas Tech, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming Big 12 weekend. Buckle up, it's the Big 12 squad and we have a seat for you. No her feelings and thin skin allowed. Squad up, you're part of the Big 12 squad. Happy Thursday night, everybody, and welcome back to the Big 12 squad. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and join us as we get you ready for another wild week across the Big 12 conference. Thank you for making these shows your first listen every single day as we have Chris Level of Locked On Texas Tech, Cody Stovall of Locked On Oklahoma State, Parker Ainsworth Locked On Cougs, Kevin Borba Locked On Buffs, Roll Call Still Going, Richie Bradshaw Locked On Sun Devils, Mountaineer Paul of Locked On West Virginia, Jay Catch Locked On BYU Cougars, Derek Johnson of Locked On Jayhawks, and JT Wistrasil of Locked On Utes, one big breath and one big show headed your way as the Big 12 goes on the road this week to a bunch of mid-major schools. Uh, before we get into this week's slate, though, let's recap a bit of last week. Can we all agree, Cody Stovall, that a win against Tulane on the road is better than a win at home against 4-8 and eight Arkansas? Everybody, are we all right there? No. I hope you got Willie the reaction Fritz. that you Willie, were no, no. For, Willie, right? Willie Fritz agrees. Willie Fritz agrees, so we agree. Transitive property, that's good for us. Cody Stovall, what makes you think that Oklahoma State's home win, giving up 600 yards, uh-huh, is better than Kansas State's road win against Tulane? Well, I mean, whenever you look at uh, Tulane, they are a completely different team. Last year, they had 17 uh, American Conference, um, you know, all-conference performers. They only re- they lost 11 of those individuals. Whenever you factor in Willie Fritz, that means exactly 70.588% of their returning production is gone. I understand that the, the coach came over from Troy is a really good coach. And I also understand that they returned their starting running back. But outside of that, they lose over 300 starts whenever you could talk about the eight guys that are draft eligible that ended up in some semblance of an NFL roster. Those guys alone are 278 starts before you take into consideration the three guys that left Tulane with Willie Fritz and the defense coordinator for Houston. How am I doing, Drake? Can I can I just just hear that is all about a team that you didn't play this week. Thank you. <laughs> you asked the entire question. scouting I'm sorry report. You didn't love the answer, but I was ready, buddy. Death, taxes, and Mike Gundy, and he can shop for bargain basement linebackers. If you don't believe him, just ask him because he will tell you. Jeez. This might be a cop out, but like, what if Tulane just gets housed by Oklahoma this week? Like, would how, how would that make us look both at Houston? Wait how would second. that make us yeah, look at Tulane? Is that you know, Derek you know. Johnson of Locked On Jayhawks? Derek, uh, you're still alive? Yeah, we oh don't need to gosh, mention what dude. happened in the game. Drake, why did why didn't you warn me about Jeff Grimes? Oh, dude, I can't. Is that what is the problem? Can somebody hey. tell me the problem with Kansas, please? Hey, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I mean, Jake loves Jeff Grimes. Yeah. Hey, Jeff Grimes is a legend in Provo, Utah. I'll have you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so you get into the game, and Kansas averaged 5.6, 5.7 yards per carry against Illinois. They held Illinois to 2.2 yards per carry. That's a Brett Bielema team. They held them. That was the lowest yardage total that Lance Leipold team at Kansas has given up to a power four opponent. Uh, what was the deal? It was Jalen Daniels threw three picks, and Jeff Grimes wanted to go deep or throw screen passes every play and not run the football. They averaged 4.4 yards per pass, over 5.5 yards per carry. It doesn't take a mathematician to know what you should be doing more, and they refused to rely on the run in that game. So it could just be a weird loss we look back on in a few weeks and are like, yeah, that was just an odd one. Or it might be a sign that, like, maybe Andy Kotelnicki was pulling more than we might have thought for the offense and the quarterback play. I don't know. What have you done to Jeff Grimes? This is a guy who <laughs> ran the ball, like, 80% of the time in Provo. I don't know what you guys did to him. Somebody yeah, did all something. I got to say experience be, be ready for UNLV. That's all I got to say. <laughs> ready for UNLV. <laughs> yeah. am, I, am I white girl wasted, or was that the worst performance ever by Jalen Daniels in a KU uniform? Like, he just looked like a completely different player. He looked lost. He looked confused. He couldn't get his platform set right. He was throwing against his body all day. It just seemed like he was very out of sorts from the very get-go. No, I agree. And, and that's been the conversation all week. Nobody knows. It's like, have all the injuries added up? Is it that he hasn't played in a while? He's shaking off rust? Is it a Jeff Grimes thing? Um, I, I don't entirely know. And that's what's scary because it's like, if Jalen Daniels isn't the guy that you think he is – 
this offense is going to be very different. The season is going to be very different. And that's why this week, I mean, UNLV is a good opponent. KU beat them in the bowl game. I don't know if that helps or hurts you here in this go around, but it's one of those where it's like, if KU doesn't perform against UNLV, mm-hmm. all of a sudden fans are going to start changing their expectations to just, can you just make a third straight bowl game versus if Jalen does look like the guy we've seen on the mm-hmm. bigger sample size, maybe it's back to like, okay, new season, big 12 play. You know, Texas was tied with Wyoming in the fourth quarter, the Oklahoma state, South Alabama game, K state lost to Tulane a couple of years ago when they won the big 12, it'll just be, you know, whatever. It's just a weird loss early in the season. Yeah, um, I would stress that we're all going to agree that UNLV is a very, very, very good opponent. We're all going to believe that. <laughs> I uh, I do want to pitch it to Kevin Morbell again. Yeah, was the Kelly Leipold thing real? For those who need a context here, apparently the Kansas coach's wife tweeted that she wanted more fan support. Derek, to our, to our local expert, Derek. Yeah, actually, nobody knows. I actually oh. have gotten texts from people like in the media who have literally been like, should we like FOIA request Twitter? How is that going to go? But I don't know. Probably just get shut down. Uh, I was going to let Kevin Borba talk about Colorado this week, but Dion called me and said, don't let anybody speak on our football team whatsoever. <laughs> we are going to do things our own way and right. nobody gets to have an opinion, period, except for let us. Let the band play, Dion. Let the band play. <laughs> what if we play? Can we play the rap song first and then let Borba talk? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I could give you the full breakdown of yeah. what the whole, they released a statement because that's how dramatic it was. No, it goes Shador Sanders snippet of perfect timing, which is the song. If you like it or not, I, I, it's not one of my favorite rap songs. And then it goes glory Colorado. And then they kick the field goal. And then they play the fight song is what their statement said. Now, granted, no one was paying attention because I didn't realize that many people cared about a song after a game. But when the New York Mets did it, no one cared because they have that guy. With they the- don't have a fight song. They don't have the band. I mean, you got a whole. They got seventeen-year-olds singing the stands waiting to play the tuba because their team scored. When they do yeah, score, but they, that the, is. Mets, the Mets have a guy with a trumpet. I mean, like, who doesn't yeah. have a guy with a trumpet? The, but I mean, the students wanted. It's perfect time. I don't know. I feel like Colorado has a lot more to worry about than what song they're playing after touchdowns because against Nebraska, the fight they song, or the touchdowns. fight song. It's it's pretty clear. Do you I have mean, a bottle of bourbon? You keep like a Bob Euchre in Major League. Like you I just wish. before I every wish. show. I, I need one talking to you because realistically, <laughs> we're talking about a fight song when Colorado just got absolutely embarrassed by Nebraska team they boat raced last year, and all they did differently was add a freshman quarterback. So, hey, real quick, can we just talk about how crazy is that Utah beat a Big 12 team and it doesn't count for absolutely anything this weekend? Like, isn't Utah that beat a glorified mid We can all agree that Tulane is better than Baylor. <laughs> Tulane is better than Baylor. We can yeah. all get to find that better one. than yeah. Baylor. Yeah. You well, I mean, yeah. JT, to your point, UNLV is really good. probably the game of the week in the Big 12 this week <laughs> mm-hmm. with Arizona and K-State. That doesn't count either. Like, what's up with it? I know. Like, it's I, so weird. And it hurts the league because it hurts the league yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think you're well, gonna especially take... in a midweek game. Like, it just—I would much rather that game be on a Saturday where it could be the center spotlight. And it's not only a weekday game, but like you also said, it doesn't count for anything in the conference standing, which feels like a real missed opportunity. I know the scheduling made it challenging, but it feels like a rare point where Brett Yormark did miss the mark to me. Well, this was uh, effectively Utah's easiest game on the schedule. So I would, if I was you, I would not complain. If I was Arizona or Kansas, their easiest game. One of those two teams is going to be effectively eliminated from at large in the college football. We still get to play. We still get to play Houston. No offense, Park. Sorry, Park. Which Houston Baylor? Baylor Baylor (laughs) again. (laughs) UNLV is a very good team. UNLV is very good. (laughs) UNLV is a very good team. <laughs> Drake, I don't want to derail, but I, real quick, I wanted to ask Kevin: Can you explain the Shadur walking off the field with like two and a half minutes left no, thing no. before I unload on Colorado on my show? Can yeah. you tell me? I've never. I don't know. That was that was, yeah, that was weird. There's man. a lot of things to unload about on Shador Sanders. Um, <laughs> okay. How he how he answered that question after the game about the running the rushing attack. Didn't love that. I feel like if you want to unload, that'd be the thing. Um, what I want to unload on is him walking off the field. Um, he wasn't the only player. Um, him and another guy who are injured were both walking off the field to go get checked out um, in the locker room is what we were told. So there's a lot of things to be upset with. I think a selective picture is probably not the one. I just don't think outside of Parker, um, most people don't know who Chidozi the is. So he also was walking off the field, but they were going to the locker room. 
Um, but yeah, that there's a lot of things to be outraged about the band, what song they're playing, um, get the hatred for CBS. Yeah, I don't, I can, there's a lot of, I would, I would avoid that one though. That's like the, the mm -hmm. least of my concerns. <laughs> Let's stay right there though. Uh, coming up, Colorado gets Colorado state this week. And I, I picked the Rams. They're the Rams, right? They're so irrelevant. I don't know if I know they're, they're the Rams. Uh, I picked the Rams to win. Let's okay. break that down and give our predictions for this Saturday's games. That is up next right here on the Big 12 Squad. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel's where I went last week and said, hey, BYU is plus 335 against SMU. I think I'm going to put some money on this. And guess what FanDuel said? Ahem. <clears throat> BYU won, so we're going to give you that money. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book, so they have something a little bit different for you as well. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5, get a three-week trial for free of Sunday, Sunday ticket, NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon at a market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com. Download today. Back here on the Big 12 squad, a whole lot of weird games this weekend. Our conference travels to Oxford, Ohio, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Logan, Utah, and Laramie, Wyoming. But maybe the one that is the most dangerous is when Colorado goes to Colorado State and Fort Collins. Kevin Borba, uh, the one and two Colorado Buffaloes going into Big 12 play. <laughs> How do we feel about the Buffs after two games now going into the staunch confines of Canvas Stadium? Let's relax. They're one and one on the year, first of all. Um, um, the Colorado State game hasn't happened yet. No, I think the Colorado State game will be a very good judge of how good or where this team is at. Um, realistically, well, what were the first two games? Bad judges? No, I mean we'll we'll see how they handle opponent. They should be handily. Like that's where we're at. Realistically, I just want to I just want to know if two guys are going to go bowling like the week after uh, the game because there was an unfortunate. Hopefully, there's incident no death during. threats this time. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> hopefully we keep the death threats to a minimum. Um, realistically, the Nebraska game was a test of how good they do against teams that are going to be good, and they did terrible. So. What does that say about Colorado? Well, one, I think Pat Shermer is already a problem, which if you're a fan of the Denver Broncos, if you're a fan of any coach or any team, excuse me, that he's coach, you knew this was going to be an issue. They were the worst running team in the country last year, and somehow their numbers are worse. So let's just factor that in. And then also, they're very much a vibes team. I hate to be like the vibes guy, but when you go three and out on the first drive and then throw pick six the next, uh, the vibes were down very quickly and they could not respond because they have no ulterior plan outside of throwing the ball 50 times a game. So I think realistically they should handle Colorado State despite, Drake, despite Drake's per, uh, prediction. But if they don't, then I just think we're going to have a lot more problems. I think we'll start talking about Hold on, more about the future. Will well, Shador opt out? We're going to be talking Dion. about a lot of things. He wants yeah. all of us to play offensive line next week. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, I'm just like to point out, last week I said the line. I had questions about it. I got a little pushback. Can I, can I get a little cookie or something? <laughs> yep, no. the line is. Maybe uh, you be in Illinois, maybe. Better. <laughs> the line gets pushed back. That was good. That was good. Big bird. Jeez. Hey, Jeez. the good news KU gets Colorado late in the season. I don't think Shudder Sanders and Travis Hunter will be playing. They'll just have opted out by All, Already Ooh, looking either, past either either Daniel, Daniel, a right? very good team. <laughs> um, can, I, can we do. I'm sorry, Richie. I'm going to do this to you. Um, the, you're not Vanderbilt, but this kind of feels like the lovable loser. You're like, oh, hey. You're here and you're really good all of a sudden. I love that Arizona State blew the brakes off Wyoming and then beat an SEC team, like handedly beat an SEC yes. team for three quarters last week. You've been awful quiet down there. Come and cash some happy checks, big guy. <laughs> I'm I am having a good time in Tempe and everybody else is too. We're just as surprised as you are. The, the bar was low, which means that when we are playing at the level that we are playing, it's such an exciting time and everyone's kind of wondering you know when's when's the uh the next shoe gonna drop and everything like that and you're going to san marcos on thursday night to play a very quality texas State level game. do it correct him level how do you pronounce it it's san marcos and then this is the marcus. party school bowl that's what it is <laughs> i mean like it's the party school no. bowl. I, I'm, people I'm who know it. no that's 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 real people who know no that's the party school bowl right there i mean applause for everybody man get after it <laughs> well ASU is certainly going to be hitting up Mill Avenue by halftime, which is what they've done all year long. Got to find a way to keep them in the stands, but it's very easy for them to get distracted when partying is in their nature. 
True. And it'll <laughs> hey, be Drake. A Drake, Wednesday really? Night. Hello, Drake, Drake. Really quick, can we talk about something? I, with all of the best teams in the Big 12 looking extremely shaky last week, I feel like Utah clearly cemented themselves as the team to beat. Yes, Cam Rising got hurt in the game. It's a Whoa, little wrist injury. If he was... If he went to play this weekend, he would. He, if he, this was a big game this weekend, I've been told by people close to Cam he would play. Like, That's I've fine. been told that, too. So this Utah team, clearly to me, they have blown out the teams that they are supposed to blow out. And I have not seen the other teams take care of that. When, before Cam got hurt and left the game. Gonna, when Cam got hurt. Before Cam got hurt, hurt yeah. I mean, I, we don't want analysis. I had never had a girlfriend before I had a girlfriend, and then I got a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It seems Two a words, JT. Thing. What? thing. What? Two words, JT. Uno doctor. You remember what happened last year? I know. I he know. Was up I know. Baylor this feels two. different. He was on the sideline. He was happy. He even said it was as much. Jake, you're absolutely right. I still have PTSD from last year. But Utah has beaten the teams they were supposed to beat handedly. And yes, with you, when Cam gets hurt, obviously Utah isn't going to be no. a juggernaut. But when Cam has been healthy, this team has looked as good as they were supposed to be. Baylor had negative yardage for most of the first quarter. The Utah defense is the best individual unit in the what Big 12 after currently. The first quarter? Did Something happened after the. Did they play three more? Or did yeah, they I stop said it? Cam, got, Cam got hurt. Cam got in the. <laughs> that was good. The Cam just, got hurt, and the offense tailored off. But as I said, this isn't a major injury, and I I do want to get your thoughts on what I said about the other thing. I think the Utah defense is clearly the best overall unit in the Big Twelve based on what we've seen so far. Yeah, I could have told you that. I think the point I before I interrupt that. Drake. But I think the point Drake's missing is this point. Cam has a medical degree and can take care of himself. That'll really speed up the process, <laughs> and he'll be okay. So he's older I, than I am. Cam I just older than think me. You're gonna walk he's also older than me too. Four he's years older, older, older than me. Um, I don't <laughs> know if you can walk in the conversation masters. and be like, "All oh, the top teams, the Big Twelve, look shaky except us." My brother, you looked Early so shaky. How did we look? We looked completely fine until Cam left the game. So, hey, and with this is a minor injury. Didn't Cam rise in point favorite and won by 11 against a putrid Baylor team? Oklahoma State and Kansas State and Iowa State all got better wins than you this week. Kansas no, State that's fair. But then Iowa State, State Iowa State's messing that's around week one, and that game was that Iowa State. That game was still you, close at various points. Houston that game. lost. Utah Houston hasn't lost really been close had a better win. with Cam healthy, and once again, it's a minor, minor injury. So I feel like we've seen Utah play at a level higher than any other team in this conference so far. This is okay. So JT, you, you, you can have. You guys are all coming out after you. You have to take. You have to take a turn getting a punch in on me. <laughs> it's coming every direction. I deserve it. I deserve it. I deserve it. But just like take a second. And <laughs> can we get somebody in graphics to make that uh, a quote card from what Parker just said? Because that was that was legend. <laughs> that was good. I, I I mostly pick on Baylor because Drake's here on his own because Cam is not here. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy who was like, "Sure, guys, I'll be there." And then thirty minutes pre-show. Yeah, yeah maybe not. <laughs> We, we're not very good at football. I'm just not going to Let's not act like the Kansas State win was good. They, they got bailed out That's by a pass saying. return call on a touchdown. Hey, Borba, they, they won. We can't, we can't time out. Time out. I'm sure Chris you, you so, did you, so did Utah. And you all roasted Utah. You were, saying it was, they, you were saying they had a better win. They they had oh, a yeah, lucky 100%. win. No, they, they was, won the game. Win. Kansas State had a better win than you. Yes, they beat a more quality team on the road. Too late is better than Baylor head to head. Drake, didn't you say Baylor was only going to win three games? I, I feel like they're going to win more than that. No. After playing what? this team, this I guarantee is, you they're going to be a, This is more good Utah defense than problem. it was bad Baylor offense. I think it's the same problem with you and Cody this week. You're like, oh, man, that team we played, they're a lot better than I expected. Yeah, against your own team. You ever thought about maybe you made them look good? Oh, well. They no, we really did not make them. Did you watch the you? game? They had hey, negative the, yardage in the first quarter. The difference between me and JT is I gave you a logical reasoning as to my statement. Logical. But what JT is simply stating, the if we members. all watch the same game to win a conference Seven. title, you probably have to have depth. I'm not done talking yet. Utah doesn't have enough depth to win the conference. Do you have talent? Yes. Do you have enough depth? No. We just watched the daggone football game where you didn't have enough depth. You got my name dropping out. You did that, JT. I can't help it. That camera. This. Yes. Yes. Go. Utah plays UNLV. Hey, really quick, since since apparently we this didn't turn into math class and we need numbers. Seventh ranked defense in the country, clearly the best in the Big 12. The only defense in the Big 12 not to give up 100 yards rushing or 100 yards passing in a game yet. They played some inferior opponents. What did they do? The Utah defense is taking care of business. Van Fillinger, Connor O'Toole, top two pass rushers on this team, one and two in sacks. Is that better for numbers? It's a shame that there is more than just defense in a football game and that all offenses have to play well. Congrats on your
here. 23 points against Baylor. But they're much improved on defense, aren't they? Against you, they were. Coming up, let's get a prediction from everybody on this. We were supposed to do it in this segment. Coming up, let's get a prediction on this weekend from everybody. We're going to keep it to 30 seconds or less on the Big 12 squad. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. Look, if you see a good tweet from at LO Big 12 on Twitter, it wasn't me. It was my intern that I hired from LinkedIn Talent Solutions. LinkedIn is not just a job board. It helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else. Over 70% of LinkedIn users only use LinkedIn. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire a professional like a professional. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Visit linkedin.com slash locked on college today. It's prediction time. We've not heard enough from the guy who's got the backyard brawl this week. Mountaineer Paul, is your team good now? 30 seconds on West Virginia and Pitt this weekend. I mean, it's a good question. I think it's going to answer a lot of questions. <laughs> you know, Pitt's not exactly world beaters. They they, they scored 20, 22 and answered in the fourth, which was wild against yeah. Cincinnati. Holstein was four for 11 up until that point. Went 10 of 11 in the fourth quarter of a game. Kudos to him. I don't think Pitt's a good football team. I think we smash them this weekend. I really, truly do. Yeah, John more Denver rules. Yep. Yeah. John Denver rules. Love it. Our pass defense is definitely tone. suspect, though. <laughs> um, Richie Bradshaw, let's go more in, in <clears throat> chronological order now. Arizona State, Texas State in San Marcos. Arizona State is a one and a half point favorite against GJ Kenny's team. Give me your your prediction this week. I think it's going to be a slug fest. A slug fest. Excuse me. The way that ASU wins this game is to continue to suffocate the run, which over the first two games, they have not allowed 100 combined rushing yards to their opponents. Uh, for what it's worth, Wyoming can run the football. Mississippi State has Blake Shape, and it's not like they're playing nobodies. Obviously, there's still a lot to prove. In the meantime, you've got an offense that's kind of anemic through the passing attack, but you can run the heck out of the football with Cam Scadaboo, who just won the Doak Walker Player of the Week award. Give him the football. Yeah. Allow Sam Levitt to play game manager, suffocate on defense. You have four turnovers on defense, three touchdowns on those four turnovers. There's a way to win this game. You just need to pound the rock and somehow slow down a really good Texas State running game. Yeah, Blake Shapin is one of the quarterbacks of all time. Thank you, Richie. He sure uh, is. <laughs> Cody Stovall, locked out Oklahoma State. Going into Tulsa this week, um, I just want to put it out there. Alan Bowman didn't look very good. To me, I don't know about you, but I still Shocker. think Oklahoma State is <laughs> 28 year old, somehow older than Cam Rising. Um, yeah. Alan, it's a joke. Uh, Alan Bowman didn't look great. Do you have a lot of confidence, not just this week, but moving forward for a team that I do believe is consensus top three? Um, I mean, not necessarily. I think what you saw from Bowman was a little bit of a regression back to the, the old school Bowman. Chris, I don't know why you're laughing. You are here to there. talk about I love me there. some Alan Bowman, man. I mean, hey, throw a flag on me. On I mean, there. come on. Boom, 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 um, boom, boom, boom. Here's what I'll say is there's two teams historically that have been able to shut down Ollie Gordon. That is Texas and Arkansas. Thankfully, Tulsa is neither one of those ball clubs. There has to be an emphasis. We have to figure out how to run the ball again at some point in time time or this season is not going to go the way we need to this has to be the game that our offensive line has to stop playing like a Charmin extra soft toilet paper and run somebody into the ground it has to be this day I'm going to say 44 21 Cowboys Cody you forgot to say Utah in two weeks for shutting down Ollie Gordon as well but you, you'll learn it's okay Oh, you, next you, better show, hope and pray. you better hope and pray Cam Rising is healthy, buddy. <laughs> I promise he is. I promise. North Texas, Texas Tech. Um, Chris Level, I saw today the entire defense for the Red Raiders is out. Are you going to be at the game? Are you okay? Are you also? <laughs> a sign that says, I hope both teams have fun. Um, North Texas has a good offense, Chris. Will anybody be available on defense for Texas Tech? <clears throat> 
Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, like, can we just get a redo and start the season over? This is, uh, I, I'm just, I, I, I feel like uh, I'm, I'm jealous. The word of the day is jealousy from all most of you guys. This is uh, not been a good start of the season. Uh, North Texas, uh, actually head coach Eric Morris played wide out for Mike Leach at Texas Tech. They do, they throw it all over the place. Chandler Morris, who was a TCU in Oklahoma. Yeah. I think he's throwing it for about 380 a game. Who knows? I mean, take the over, uh, say a prayer. Uh, hopefully the Red Raiders will quit turning the ball over, quit committing penalties, but need a win. Uh, we got the Sun Devils coming in next weekend, uh, or a week from Saturday, and then the Bearcats the week after that. So you got three straight home games, but better make some hay, folks. Three straight losses. That's crazy. Dude. Oh, <laughs> tough. I, mean, I, deserve, I, I, I deserve all the smoke. I'm there sorry. He I, is. I, yeah. nice I, can, I can appreciate the fact that Texas Tech decides to put out these injury reports so we know exactly who's not playing. Oh, my playing. gosh. Yeah, BYU Please. gives you nothing. Uh, Please JT, let there be injury reports. JT, you get 15 seconds because it's Utah State. Utah State. Utah's going to blow out. Utah State's going to be 38-7. to 7. Utah's former quarterback last year, Bryson Barnes, actually may start in the game. Kind of weird, but Utah's going to blow them out. It's not going to be a game. And then all sites will be on that matchup in Stillwater the following week. Can't wait to go. Yeah. Uh, I have seen Bryson Barnes play college football once in my life, and play is a very strong word. Colorado and Colorado <laughs> State. Strong. Kevin That's Borba, strong. you've given a bit of a prediction. Give me the full prediction. Yeah, I think Colorado is going to win 28 to 14. Um, I think they just have a lot of problems in the trenches still. Um, defensively, they haven't gotten to anyone at all. And offensively, they kind of got embarrassed by Nebraska. So there's going to be a lot of people tuning into this game like there was last year. There was almost 9 million people watching. And I think we're going to see a very weird and ugly win. But I think Colorado State is a bad football team. Yeah. Uh, Parker, for you, uh, it's an old Josh Pateism. Never play a food. You've got rice at home this week, and <laughs> you're a four point favorite. Will Houston get its only win of the season? If it were only about eating rice, I think it would be a lot more than a four-point favorite. I think that, truthfully, Houston feels weirdly good about where they're at. Uh, there's a world where they played two playoff teams between UNLV. If they can beat Boise, could be the group of five team in. If you told me Oklahoma was the fourth God, best you SEC love UNLV. Team, you really I love, love UNLV. UNLV. Uh, Arcadians for life. Oh, yes. okay. I, I like, yeah. Uh, I, no, I think that Houston's feeling good. I got to be honest. Houston lost to Rice last year. Felt like a nail in the coffin for the Holgerson era. Uh, you got to hope that you open up the Willie Fritz era with a win here. Uh, a lot of people in in town. Your Marcus said he's going to be there watching it in person. A lot could be on the line God, this weekend for Why weird, would he ever do that game. to himself? Please, no. It's a beautiful oh. city with great food, including lots of rice to eat. <laughs> uh, Jake Hatch, we are going right to you. BYU at Wyoming. Never play a night game in Laramie, but this Wyoming team stinks. Hey, so long as BYU avoids the urine bombs that Wyoming fans are sure to throw at their sideline, I think they'll be okay. That's the biggest thing with this game. Shut down the rushing attack. You already heard Richie talk about it. Arizona State shut it down. BYU's defense last week is, besides Georgia, the only Power 4 team to hold a fellow Power 4 team out of the end zone. Jay Hill has completely revolutionized this BYU defense. If they do their thing, BYU will handle their business up there. Hey, is that is that the bomb thing? Is that that's real? The urine oh. bomb? Like, what, explain, <laughs> like no, you can't oh. just gloss over that. Like, what in the world are you talking okay. about, man? Okay, Wyoming fans hate, and I mean hate BYU. FU BYU is a constant chant up there when BYU shows up in Laramie. My dad has been there when inebriated white cowboy fans peed over the railing onto BYU walking out of the locker room. There have been urine bombs thrown from the stands onto players in the on the sideline. Like in a balloon or a bottle or what? I mean, what are we talking about? In a balloon. In a balloon. Chris, you're a little Does too interested. I love how I went to Laramie last year. Yeah. I went to Laramie last year. They have tortillas in Lubbock. Yeah, so. yeah, Chris. Chris is going to start soaking tortillas in urine now. Good job, Jake. Uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to learn, man. BYU has won. Trying to learn. <laughs> BYU has won nine straight games over Wyoming. The last time Wyoming beat BYU, it was two losing teams going head to head. Wyoming fans tore down the goalposts and paraded them down Main Street in Laramie, Wyoming. They have an absolute visceral hate for the Brigham Young University Cougars, and it's going to be on full display Saturday night.
Well, Hatch, may God be on your side. It sounds like if that is the case, he is. He definitely, definitely <laughs> we is. We can all mark matchup. urine bomb off of our bingo card from here. <laughs> uh, Big 12, yeah, hey, Jake, uh, we're, we're a raincoat. Bring an umbrella. <laughs> oh, I, I, trust me. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Well, Chris Level's got to get back to crying. Thank you guys for joining the show this week. Chris Level of Locked On Texas Tech. Cody Stovall, Locked On Oklahoma State. Parker Ainsworth with the Cougs of Houston. Kevin Borba in Colorado. Richie Bradshaw of the Sun Devils. Mountaineer Paul of Locked On West Virginia. Jay Catch of BYU. Derek Johnson or Jayhawks and JT Wistersell of Big 12 champion. Did you change the script? Thank you. Thank you. Of the Thank Utah you. Utes. Thank you. And follow, subscribe to your favorite Locked On Big 12 podcast. We'll be covering your favorite team every day throughout the season. Don't forget, I'll have you covered the entire network on Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. See you with the Big 12 squad next week.